All right, so we're ready for our training session on the home office deduction. And I thought I'd just start out the conversation. Um, we're here with, with Ingrid Ceballos in our West LA office, and um, she has some questions that we're going to go through about the home office deduction. I thought I would just start out the conversation by uh, pointing out this statistic. Uh, this is from 2013, but it's going to be pretty similar to what it is now where most startups, um, and not only startups, but even established businesses, um, there's a very high percentage that, that are home-based. Um, you know, with the whole, uh, with the rise of the internet and a lot of people working remotely, there's more home offices uh, than ever. So it's definitely something that you see a lot as a tax preparer and it, there, there's some tricky parts about how you handle that deduction and, and there's also a lot of questions that the clients have about what you can do and what you can't do and, and people hear that it's you know having a home office deduction is a big red flag for, for IRS audit so it's kind of like a, a hot issue so to speak and Ingrid is this something that you um, that you hear uh, you know clients talk about and ask about? Yes I do um, a lot of people are like, oh, I work from home, um, what is, what can I do? Do I put my rent? Can I put in my water bill and stuff like that? So I want to know what exactly we could write off, write off for people that work from home. Great, great. And um, is it something that you uh, run across and, and hear about pretty frequently, would you say? Yes, I actually have heard it a bit, um, like, you know, I'm just starting it. so. I hear Cynthia a lot, but like, oh, you work from home and put it in. And I had a couple um, before last tax season. So I kind of want to know exactly how can I get the square footage or what's, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so I would say in terms of the tax preparation industry right now is, you know, with the rise of like be people being able to do their own taxes online, and uh, you're, it's going to be more and more each year people that are either self-employed um, or they have something like a little bit unusual about their situation. Like, for instance, they're working at home and they're wondering, you know, what deductions can I get? Oh, also, I want to make sure that I do it correctly. Those are the, mainly the people that will be coming to like a professional as opposed to doing it themselves. And we'll see more and more of that. So I think you're, you're right on track by, um, you know, wanting to know how to handle it properly. And, um, and there's a lot of tax savings that you can get from people, uh, for people, uh, when you're, you're doing the home office deduction. But again, it is something that you got to do it correctly because if, uh, if it's not done correctly, it can, it can cause some problems. So um, I thought we'd just go through the actual tax form and, uh, and see how it works. And um, as we go through it, Ingrid, if you have any questions about, you know, uh, how it goes, then um, just let me know. Okay. So let's say that you have, you know, and then you have the social. Okay, that's going to automatically generate, obviously, in your tax program. Um, first of all, what is a, a home office, like an eligible home office deduction, is, uh, is really what it, it's dependent on a couple key things. So it has to be regular use of the area of the home so regular not like um, you know once every month um, you have regular use of the area and exclusive use of the area so it cannot be like um, you know it's it's 50 percent personal and 50 percent business to claim a home office deduction those are the two key things just like we talked about Ingrid of um, the ordinary and necessary deductions you, that's what you think of when you think of is something deductible like a work expense well, is it ordinary and necessary? And, and necessary meaning helpful and appropriate. And for home office deduction, you want to use the words of regular and exclusive. Like, I work at home. Well, is is do you work there regularly? And is the area that you work in at home, is it exclusively used for business? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's like, can you deduct it? You know, that's the starting point. Once you determine that, you know, that that is the case, and it doesn't have to be like an entire room that's exclusively for business. Like maybe the person has, you know, it's it's partly their living room, but then they have like a workstation that is only exclusively for work. It can still be a part of a room. It doesn't have to be a totally separate room, but it has to be at least a separate area 
that's exclusively for business. Right. So it's like, oh, well, I work here, but I also eat there now, like, like your kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like your kitchen table. Exactly. Like if somebody works at their kitchen table and they also eat at their kitchen table, then that's not going to be accepted as a legitimate home office deduction. It doesn't mean that the person can't put it on there. If they're doing their own taxes, they could be mistaken and they could just, but for what they're looking for from you, from a professional, is to say like, well, is this a legitimate, like, can I do this legitimately within the rules? And if I ever got audited, would I have a problem? Okay. And so those are the two words. You say, think, okay, you work there regularly? Okay, check. And is, it, is, is the area exclusively worked for, uh, you know, used for business? Doesn't have to be a totally separate room, but the area is exclusively for, for business, yes or no? And if yes, then check. And then you can move to actually filling out the, uh, the, the form itself. Okay. Okay. So the form itself, it, it looks a lot more complicated than it is. And we'll just go ahead. At least I hope I can fill this out. You know, usually we fill this out in the, uh, in the tax software, but, um, let's, let's go through it. So you have the total area of the home right here. Or, mm -hmm. Excuse me. I'm already messing up. It's the, uh, this is the area used regularly and exclusively. And they even put those two words, right? Right in the, yeah. Yeah. And look here too. There's even a little thing where you can you can claim a home office deduction for storage of inventory. So say somebody has like a they sell um, you know makeup or they sell something where they store it in their garage. Um, that potentially could be used for this too. So let's say it's 200 square feet and uh, total area of the home is a thousand square feet. Okay. So that's going to give you a percentage, like a business use percentage of 20%, right? So 200 uh, into 1,000 is 20% of the home is, is for business use. Okay, they have a, they have a couple kind of um, uh, fi finer points here, which is actually pretty interesting if you have daycare clients, clients that run a daycare out of their home where they uh, can obviously, like say you have a daycare at your house, you're, the kids are going to be, we all know how kids are, they're going to run everywhere, you know, so it's not going to be like you can keep them in a one area usually. Um, yeah. <laughs> you cannot have this line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like it, w it wouldn't be a very fun daycare if all the kids were like confined to the home office and they were like in a 10 by 10 room. So, you know, with those, they let they let you actually use a different formula, which is based on like the number of hours that it's used. Um, but, this, okay. you know, this it's the same thing. It's figuring out like, hey, this is your house, right? How much what percentage of your house is is justifiably, uh, you know, related to your business. And you're going to come out with a percentage here. So let's say it's, you know, for sake of example, it's 20%. So at that point, you're going to move to this step of, of figuring out, okay, so 20% business, what's going to actually be the deduction that I can get from, from uh, working at home or from having a home office? So direct expenses, um, Ingrid, is uh, is something that is directly only for the home office. Right. It's like, not for yeah, it's not for the whole house. So it's going to give you the entire amount. Like, let's say you made a repair in your home office, like you're, you know, there was water damage in the home office and you, uh, you know, you repaired it and cost a thousand bucks. You would put a thousand bucks direct is a direct expense because it's only for the home office. Right. Okay. So now it feels like oh, I have to remodel my whole, paint my whole house, and it'll be indirect. Correct. Exactly. Yep. And so indirect expenses, anything you, and most of those would be, you know, most of the common expenses are going to be indirect because they'll apply to the whole property. Um, so indirect expenses is is anything that is not just for the home office, but it's going to go for the entire uh, entire property, and you would just go down the list. You know. Um, their mortgage interest, so they have a mortgage. Let's say they paid, you know, fifteen thousand real estate taxes, twenty five hundred, and it lists out, you know, all right here, all the all the um, expenses like homeowners insurance. You know, if it's if it's not a mortgage but it's rent, you know, they'll put rent right here. You know, let's say it's a thousand a month. 
Okay, and and other expenses, um, you know, if it's related to the house, it's potentially could be used here. You know, utilities. Let's say it's one fifty a month. I was gonna ask you, utilities. Um, utilities will be like just like internet and I guess electricity, or is it also like uh, whatever they they pay for utilities in their home? Yeah, it'd be any utility. So it, it could be like if we're working in the software program, there's even uh, you can like describe what e what each one is. You know, electricity, this much. Gas, uh, gas bill, this much. Internet is kind of like um, it is a utility to some extent, but you probably want to figure out like how is the internet related to the person's work? Like, are they you know using the internet 70% for business? maybe you could put 70% of the expense directly on the business form. You know, like, is it a true utility? The utilities normally is like, um, you know, electricity and, uh, and gas or like, you know, your sewer, sewer charges or something like that. So some, anything that applies to the whole house. Okay. That makes sense. I get it. Um, like, yeah. So if it's like, okay, let's say I work, on my, I have to be on the on the internet the like the whole time for working from home. Yep. Would that be in uh, a utility? You know, it could be like a lot of things in taxes, especially when you um, get into kind of some of these forms that are more uh, not complex, but they're a little bit more advanced. Is it's a judgment call? Like if someone's a um, like they work in internet marketing and they're on like you said they're uh, they're on the internet all day every day and then they might use it a little bit for personal but it's mainly like you know they have a, a more a faster internet connection that's more that's more expensive because they are in that field of work right or you got to kind of like judgment call about how much of that is uh, you know is, is work related and if it's something where it's like you know, the majority of it is work-related. What we'll sometimes do is, um, and which is permissible by the IRS, is you could put, you know, internet expense directly on the Schedule C. Can you hear me okay? So okay. I th so I think the uh, I think the internet might must have heard me talking about it and then it went out. So um so we're actually back online now. The sign sound should be good. And we were talking about how there could be a judgment call. Like if you have someone who's self-employed, and uh, you, you know Ingrid had asked, which is a great question, whether it would be better to put the uh, the internet expense as a utility on the home office form. Or if there might be a more benefit in uh, taking the uh, the deduction directly on Schedule C. So let's say that we were talking about somebody that works online all the time. You might put, like, see if you put if you put the util um, the internet as a utility, right? It's only going to take 20% okay. as, a, as a deduction, right? Because it's going to apply the same business use percentage to all of these expenses but in reality the reality of the person's situation the client situation may be more that you know internet is uh, actually you know 70% of their of their use of the internet is work related okay so that that's like it's a judgment call you know you, you want to see like okay, what's the best deduction that I could get the client, but still within the rules of, you know, what's going to be acceptable to the IRS. So you, you can get into like little finer points like that with the home office form. And people actually appreciate if you're thinking like that, because you're trying to understand like their, you know, their particular situation. Like, let's say for instance that, you know, we had a client that's a software uh, developer and um, he, was hosting like he had like five big like servers in his house that he was hosting other 
uh, pr uh, like pro software programs for his clients and he was selling the server like as a service. Um, and, and so his electricity bill was like through the roof, you know, because that he had all these big computers hooked up. So that, right, right. you know. Okay, so and then that will be on, it still will be on indirect? If you was, like, you will still put the utility bills on indirect? No, uh, not necessarily because you could, you could make, it would make more sense to put it directly on uh, Schedule C because it's more, it's, it's more related to, um, to work, like the expense itself is more related to work than the percentage is going to show, if that makes sense. Like this is 20%. So anything you put in this column, if you put the 300 bucks a, a month, uh, you know, utilities here, uh, electricity, and, se and actually, it's actually 70% of that electricity is related to work, then you're kind of like missing out on a deduction. So whether you like move that over to direct expenses or you put it directly on Schedule C, it's kind of like, it's not like there's only one way to do it, Ingrid, which is very common with, with deductions, is that like one tax preparer might do it this way, another tax preparer might do it this way, but th at the end of the day, it's the same idea is that, you know, the whatever, you're, whatever the client's getting a dedu deduction for should reflect the amount of to which it's actually related to business. Okay. okay. So does that make any sense or, or not really? Exactly. So you you might you might work through some uh, you know, there, there's, there's some more subtle and kind of things that you can do on this form, but for, for this one, I, I don't want to get too, you know, deep into the, uh, into the weeds here. Most of them are pretty straightforward. So you basically take, uh, all of these expenses, right. And you would add them up. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right, we're back. Sorry for the uh, for the technical difficulties, but why don't you uh, repeat what you were just asking, Ingrid? So my question is: um, Let's say I work from home and I have someone cleaning my house um, every two weeks or every week. Mm -hmm. And she cleans my office as well. Would that be considered as a expense? Could I write that off? Yeah, you could write off the percentage. Um, so you would put like that would go under repairs and maintenance, right? Like how you know mm -hmm. keeping your house uh, uh, clean. The house clean, uh, cleaner comes and it's a hundred bucks a month. So it'd be twelve hundred bucks would be the total. Uh, expense for the year and then just like all these other expenses here it's going to all based off this percentage so it's going to end up with a you know deduction of uh, 20 percent of 1200 and that okay. says 12,000 too so that'd be expensive okay that makes sense so yeah, you just basically go through anything that's related to the home, you know, that to, to um, all the expenses of the home. You, you know, you got to be careful in terms of like if someone does a big remodel or something like that and they spend like $100,000, you, you want to be careful with like big, you know, big expenses and, and kind of like check with your, you know, check with your supervisor or with a colleague that you're doing it right because once the numbers get real big, right, it's it's a little bit more... Uh, you got you just got to be careful but normally it's pretty straightforward it's like you figure out what the percentage is you figure out hey is there direct expenses for the home office itself or are all of them indirect and then you just run down the list you know hey what about this what about that what about this do you have renters insurance what about this you know what about uh, repairs and maintenance what about um, how much is your rent uh, how much is your our utility bills and you just basically take all that and then let me see if I can actually uh, 
finish the form itself. So you take here and obviously you guys if um, you know if you're doing this on tax software it's gonna make these calculations for you automatically but sometimes it's still helpful to look at the actual form Six thousand six hundred five seven dollars. What did you What did you end up with? Um, probably. Well, I ended up with six thousand six seventy five. I probably didn't do it right. Okay, let's go with. Uh, might as well just do it. Twenty five hundred. These com calculators on the computer are always kind of weird. You got it right. I got it right. Yeah, you got it right. Okay, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm using the computer calculator, see, I'm I'm older, so I like using that actual like ten key machine that none of you guys seem to like to uh, <laughs> to use. What was it seventy six seventy five? Okay, so it says add, add line 16 through 20, uh, da, 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 16 through 21. Whenever you get into the actual forms, it's a little bit weirder. When is 16 through 21? Okay, so line seven, right, is the business use percentage. So 20%. So you're just taking this amount here. And you're times in that by Okay, and you, you've got some other stuff that we're not going to get into on this video. There's a lot of different stuff that, you know, again, just like with almost everything having to do with taxes, you can you can get deeper into deeper and, and, and into all these, you know, like excess casualty losses, like what's that or whatever. So this video, we're going to keep it fairly basic and just say, you know, this is the amount of the expense, right, which is all your expenses added up times um, multiplied by the business use percentage, so you're getting a deduction of 1535. That's with the 20%. Okay. Exactly. So that's that's what you would have as a deduction. And and so when the, um, a deduction, right, is going to reduce your taxable income. And so the benefit of a deduction in terms of how much tax you actually save is going to depend on what rate of tax you would have paid on that income that you just reduced, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay, so let, let's talk about that because that's a big thing that comes up with home office is, um, you know, there's there's multiple places you can put a home office on a tax return. So let's say that someone is, a, is an employee so they have a W-2 mm -hmm. and they have a home office. Where, where would that go? Schedule C. Schedule A. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No problem. I, put you, I wanted to put you on the spot there. Um, but schedule, it would be a Schedule A because it's a work expense, right? It's like a, it's an unreimbursed employee expense. And it would go whatever is on the bottom of the... 8829, this 1535, for an employee, it would go on to right here. Okay, as a work as a as an employee expense, unreimbursed employee expense. For um, someone who's self-employed and is filing a Schedule C, then then it would go on to Schedule C. And it would be right here. 
1835. Okay, may, maybe even a home office could be, a home office expense could be for a, related to a partnership. And partnership income on a, uh, on, on, the per, on a personal tax return is reported on Schedule E. So you might have a home office deduction that relates to partnership income or it relates to Schedule C business income or it relates to they're an employee so it would be on Schedule A. So kind of like and especially when you're working in the tax software program, that's one of the trickiest things is like you're, you'll feel – uh, you know, you feel great because like you went through the, like you, first of all, you answered the questions for the clients of like, do I have a legitimate home office? And you kind of like, were able to figure out, okay, we're good. And then you asked them all the questions to like, and you thought through like, oh, is that a direct expense for the home? You know, could I get a hundred percent of that deduction or do I have to list it here? And you kind of like f figured out the whole thing of the home office deduction. And now you're sitting here, Hey, oh, nice. You know, got a nice little deduction here, 1500 bucks. But where does that go? That helps you um, when it's oh, so. This is the what schedule is this one? Sorry. This uh, so this is form eighty-eight twenty-nine, which is the home office uh, deduction. And that will help you minimize your standard deduction, uh, your itemized deduction, correct? It'll help you maximize your your uh, your itemized deductions on Schedule A if you're an employee. So like my point here is that once you have the deduction here, you got to think about like where does that, to, to what activity is that deduction related? What form does it go onto? Because if you go and put, uh, like what would commonly happen is um, for, for newer tax repairs is they would fill out the 8829, the home office deduction, right? And they have the correct, uh, you know, everything's correct. Everything looks good. They got the deduction amount here but then the person has a business, right? And so they're filing a Schedule C, but the software program automatically puts the home office deduction for an employee. And so it, it puts it on Schedule A when, okay. it, when it's actually related to their business on Schedule C. So it should be, you know, here's their business, right? And their home office deduction should be here. But depending how your software handles it, you got, in other words, you got to like, you got to make sure that the deduction lands in the right place, if that makes sense. Okay. No, yeah, it makes sense. So you have to choose whether it goes Schedule A, Schedule E, or Schedule C. Yep. And yeah, and Schedule A would be for uh, an employee. The person's a W-2 employee, and that's why they're working at home. Schedule C would be that they're a business. You know, Schedule E could be that they have a partnership, and so that it's kind of like you got to match up the deduction against the against the correct income. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Um, what else about home office is, you know, like I said, it would, like most things with taxes, we could get deeper and deeper into it, but I think this is a good straightforward video. Is there anything else that, um, that comes up with home office that was on your mind? No. Awesome. I think we're good. Yeah. And so this will give you, uh, especially being that, you know, you could watch this uh, again or anybody that's watching this now, you can have it. Um, to be able to review again. And I would definitely encourage you to um, like get into your actual tax software. And one of the fun things about uh, about having access to tax software is you can try out like different, uh, you know, different scenarios pretty easily. So like, let's say you had somebody that was making a uh, hundred thousand on schedule C, you can kind of see like, okay, well, how much tax would this save them, you know, versus somebody that's making, 50,000 and you can kind of like just mess around with the software and see how big of an impact the home office is going to make and that's where you start getting into okay well home office tax return because it's going to have a home office uh, mo a lot of times going to have at least a schedule A and a schedule C so it's kind of like it's a more it's a more complex and um, you know a, a little more advanced type of tax return, you might be wanting to charge like, or, or the market rate for that type of tax return might be like four or 500 bucks. Okay. But you want to know whenever you're charging more for tax work, especially now when there's, there's such a, 
um, you know, cultural thing of like, oh, you could do it yourself online or things like that. Every deduction or credit that you get, the taxpayer, you want to know like, how does the value of that deduction, like how does my expertise and how much money did I just save this person before you go to tell them it's 400 bucks? No, yeah, you, you, that's why you have to like kind of make sure you go through everything and get everything correct um, before you just like charge them, right? Exactly. You want to make them feel like I went through everything I can um, to make you pay less or a better tax return than if you do it yourself. Exactly, and that is literally the key thing in today's industry that, um, that that's like, you know, whether you want to call it sales skills or, or whatever it is, is you want to show the person that like, you know, yeah, it's 400 bucks. The great thing about it is that like you're totally coming out ahead because we just saved you $2,500 by this way. So like, would you rather, you know, have $2,500 in your pocket or $400? Oh, yeah. And so that, that's, those are the kind of things that, especially with home office, where a lot of times the person will have tried to do their taxes like online and maybe they ended up paying. And so then they come in and home office is one of those things where you can really show your skill level and, um, and you want as much as possible as a tax professional for people to feel like, hey, if I give you money, it's an investment rather than an expense. An investment means that, that I, get back, I get back more by giving you money um, and expense is just something that you just like pay out, but you don't really get anything back. Right. Okay. So, and a home office is a great uh, is a great way to do that, and and it does have to be done correctly because the IRS does look at uh, home office, and and you have to be able to make sure that it makes sense. But uh, when it does make sense, it's something that you can. Um, you know, help people with, and just because, like we saw at the at the beginning of the video, where there's so many home-based businesses, it is something that new tax repairs uh, that we're going to continue to see more and more of. So, hopefully, this video is helpful. And uh, thanks again, Ingrid. Really appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Talk to you soon. Well, yeah.